is for a lot of the data closets at all the schools. So these are where the servers are located. So just to make sure again that, that we don't have any um, surprise failures, we're going to make sure that those uh, those rooms stay cool. Uh, we've got a few seepage issues at the high school that need to be investigated. We've got some water coming into some into the basements. These are not occupied spaces, so um, but they do need to be taken care of. We will be cleaning all of the the duct work in those areas where we're doing both the uh, that investigating that seepage problem, um, as well as all the roof top units to get replaced. So we'll improve the indoor air quality in the high school by doing so. Uh, we also have a, a drainage issue over at Willow Creek um, uh, in, in one of the uh, LGI rooms where we've got some water that's coming in from the courtyard. So we'll investigate that and correct it. And Willow Creek uh, has some issues at the art rooms where the sanitary lines are not uh, fully open. So we need to investigate that and make sure we can get those art rooms back. Those were renovated fairly recently and so um, we just we need to make sure that they, it can function as it was originally designed. Um, at the high school, a uh, number of envelope repair issues. So the exterior cladding um, showing a few, few issues. The uh, precast panels, which are very much a kind of a trademark of the building. Um, they really give a lot of character. Uh, they've, they've undergone some, um, some spalling. Uh, every five, six, seven years or so, there's, a, there's some effort that goes into sealing up the areas that are that are showing spalling. So we're going to take a more comprehensive re approach and we would recommend that we go, we've had a, a forensic investigator come out and take and help us determine a, how to fix this problem so that it doesn't reoccur every five or seven years. And so we've got a recommendation for basically fixing the flashing that's causing this issue. And at that time, um, we're going to need to pull the windows out. And since those are um, single pane, non-thermally broken, outdated windows, um, it now is the opportune time to go ahead and put in some more energy efficient windows, which will greatly reduce the, uh, the energy demand for the three-story portion of the um, Portage High School East. Also at the um, gymnasium, um, there are some insulated metal panels up near the top of the roof. They're about uh, 15 feet high. You can see them in that photograph. We've had some issues where they've been, um, some of them have detached in the past, and so we've investigated that, and we have a recommendation for uh, reinforcing those so that we don't have any more issues with that. Um, It'll both seal up the panels. So again, we're going to reduce the amount of energy loss, but also we'll make sure that we don't have any panels that come off the building in the future. And then also at the high school, uh, the West Cafeteria has some water migration issues from the uh, exterior masonry. So um, there's, we're seeing it, it's bubbling up on the paint on the inside. So we'll investigate that and seal the bricks so that it doesn't continue to happen. Uh, media centers, as the superintendent had mentioned, we, um, we want to upgrade the media centers at the elementary schools. South Haven had a, an upgrade a few rec uh, uh, um, a couple years ago. You can see that on the right hand side. So these are more collaborative type environments, a lot more technology. Uh, so we would like to do that for all of the elementary schools. So again, all of the students in the district have the same opportunities and the, the same uh, level of resources at their disposal. And then at the middle schools, uh, we would be replacing the furnishings, um, tables, chairs, and, and, and the like inside those, again, to bring them up to date. Um, yeah. And then, as I mentioned, the uh, West Pool. So the West Pool has some issues that have uh, prevented us from being able to use that pool uh, recently. Um, but now as the East Pool, uh, as that renovation gets completed, um, we will no longer really have a, a, a a drastic need for the West Pool, so um, we're going to take care of those uh, some of the structural issues that were uncovered. Um, but more importantly, we're going to be converting that space into this flexible learning laboratory. So those renderings on the on the right are the intended um, new space, and very flexible, so that you can use it for lots of different types of um, programs. And th that, by the way, will be used for all of the age groupings, even though it's in the high school. The idea is that it's going to be used because it's so flexible and you can bring in so many different types of programs and change them out really quickly that everybody in the district will benefit from that one. Uh, oh, and lighting upgrades. So uh, again, uh, the focus being uh, reducing energy uh, costs or reducing operating costs and energy consumption. Uh, one of the areas where we have a, a big opportunity is uh, improving the lighting at the elementary schools. Um, upgrading those from fluorescent to LEDs. Um, that's the type of project that can really pay back very quickly over time. So we're going to be doing that at all the elementary schools and uh, replacing exterior lighting at them at, as well. And then in, in the process of doing this comprehensive um, assessment of all the facilities, we came up across a few areas where um, schools had a, a, 
um, where we maybe didn't have quite the same level of finishes as other schools in, in important areas. So we have a few projects that we're recommending, um, such as replacing the uh, flooring and some of the gymnasiums at the elementary schools. Uh, most of them have already been replaced, so I think there's two of them at, at Kyle and South Haven. Actually, there's three, Kyle, South Haven, and um, uh, Central, where we want to replace the flooring in there so everybody has the same athletic, indoor athletic environment. Um, also, Chrisman has a couple of security upgrades that we would like to take care of. And um, oh, here's the, uh, the drainage issue at Willow Creek. Um, again, uh, oh, I, I guess I talked about that earlier, but it shows up here as one of these um, items at Willow Creek that we really need to take care of this water issue that's uh, affecting the LGI room there. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, Mr. Scott Cherry from the Skillman Corporation to talk about the schedule and the budget. Thank you, Andy. I'm Scott Cherry with the Skillman Corporation. We were uh, doing the estimated costs in the, in the schedule. As Andy laid out about five different buckets of work or five different projects, um, each one of those projects will be touching virtually every school in the, in the uh, district. The total estimated construction costs is $13,175,000. With all projects, there are what we call soft costs. So soft costs include professional fees, cost of financing and bond, uh, loose equipment and technology. Those total 3550000 Together, the total project cost is $16,725,000. Regarding schedule, if the project were approved, as I mentioned, the Things that Andy outlined or Alliance outlined will touch every school. We'll make sure that we schedule these uh, projects so that they don't interfere with the learning process. We take advantage of the bidding environment. And we're looking at starting, uh, we need design time. So the design time will take about to about July or I'm sorry, about June. Uh, so we'll see our first wave of bids in June. Construction will last about 14, 15 months and uh, hope, hopefully have all the construction complete by uh, October of 2022. Thank you. We'll now hear from uh, Baker Tilly, our municipal advisors, uh, on how the proposed project will be financed, as well as information about the effect of the typical property taxpayer. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. President and uh, members of the board, Dr. Alanis. Uh, I'm Jason Tansel with Baker Tilly, and we serve as the school corporation's municipal advisor. Now that you've had the opportunity to hear about some of the projects being discussed here tonight and the need within the school corporation, it is uh, my role to explain the financial impact of what issuing $16,725,000 of bonds would have to Portage Township schools. Uh, within the resolutions before you tonight, there are certain financial characteristics, and within those characteristics, there are maximums that we are establishing. And these are maximums that we cannot exceed, but we can come down from. Uh, these include items such as borrowing amount, repayment term, maximum annual payment, and interest rate. Uh, however, a key takeaway from our presentation is that uh, the school corporation has positioned itself uh, to be able to take advantage of its current debt service structure so that they could potentially take on these projects without seeing a debt service tax rate increase. So again, uh, we would not be estimating a debt service tax rate increase should the school corporation choose to pursue these projects. I have four slides uh, here, uh, starting on slide 17, that will detail out uh, how the school corporation will be able to do this, uh, but before I go and do that. I just also want to make mention that we have some of these uh, required, uh, these char financial characteristics that are required to be available by the code should anybody from the public ask for them. So here on slide 17 is a snapshot of the school's already outstanding debt service payments. And I wanna spend a little bit of time on this slide because it will uh, explain how the school corporation can take advantage of its current position. Uh, currently, the school corporation has annual payments outstanding of about $7 million, and you can see 
each individual bond uh, illustrated there with its own individual payment. However, payments are decreasing from 2021 levels uh, all the way through final maturity of all bonds by 2028. And this is an advantageous position for the school corporation to be in because these bonds are payable from the debt service fund and to the extent that debt service payments are rising or falling, we would also estimate a correlating rise or fall with the tax rate. So as these debt service payments are falling, we are also estimating a drop in the debt service tax rate. This is what allows Portage Township Schools to be able to issue this bond without seeing a debt service tax rate increase. Slide 15 is a visual of the same information that you've seen on slide 14, but uh, I personally feel as though the graph sometimes illustrates the point better of each individual bond having its own color, but in total, you can see the step downs in payments in every single year from 2021 until 2028 when all bonds are mature. <clears throat> slide 16 is a table of the financial uh, characteristics within your resolution tonight. <clears throat> As being discussed, the borrowing amount is $16,725,000, of which $16,425,000 will be available for hard and soft project costs. The estimated repayment term is 12 years, but the maximum that we are establishing is 15 years, and that is for flexibility down the road. The interest expense is based upon current rates plus 1%, and right now we are estimating that to be uh, just shy of $3.7 million. The maximum annual payment within your resolutions is $3,878,000, and the tax rate associated with that is 18.91 cents. The 2021 certified debt service tax rate was 31.24, so that is why we are estimating no increase to the debt service tax rate. My fourth and final slide here on 17 is another visual of the estimated repayment structure that we are currently assessing. And you can see here in blue, those are the already outstanding debt payments we've already uh, reviewed on slides 14 and 15. And in the brown are the estimated repayment of the $16,725,000. So you can see that we are maintaining the school corporation's flexibility uh, down the road as well with the declining payments, but that we are not estimating a debt service tax rate increase in 2022. With that, I'll turn it back over. Thank you, Jason. We will now open the public hearing. Remember, if you would like to speak, please sign in on the sheet which is located with Attorney Elwood or email ptscommunications at portage.k12.in.us. As I mentioned earlier, we ask that you state your name and address, limit your comments to the proposed project and financing, and keep any comments to three minutes to avoid being repetitive. May I have the sign-in sheet now, or did we get any sign-ins, Attorney Elwood? Uh, we did not. Did we not, not? Did we get any through the um, email? We did not. We did not. Okay. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on the project? Okay, hearing none. We will, let's see. I guess we will continue on to our bond council. Do you want to explain the uh, project resolution? The project resolution is required when any school district plans to spend more than $1 million on a select building. It contains the estimated hard and soft cost of construction and a number for cost of issuance and establishes the total project cost. It also contains the estimated tax impact. Thank you. Do we need to read that resolution publicly? We do not. Okay. No. You guys are off the hook. <laughs> well, can I have a motion um, to adopt the project resolution? I make a motion to adopt the project res resolution. Second. We have the motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Trustee Finley? 
Yes. Trustee Vasquez, yes. Trustee Mileta? Yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Okay. Uh, next, our preliminary determination resolution. You also have before you a preliminary determination resolution, which is required when a school corporation is planning to finance more than a certain threshold for facilities. It contains, again, the total project cost, the maximum annual payment in the lease term, and other financial terms, such as the estimated principal amount and the tax rate impact. Thank you. Can I have a motion to adopt the preliminary determination resolution? I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary determination resolution. Second. We have the motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Trustee Vasquez, yes. Trustee Melita? Yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Finley? Yes. Okay. Next is our reimbursement resolution. You also have before you a reimbursement resolution. Reimbursement resolutions permit municipal entities to reimburse themselves from bond proceeds for any cash it may expend prior to the issuance of the bonds. This resolution is required under federal tax regulations. Do we have a motion to approve the and adopt the reimbursement resolution? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. You have the motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Trustee Melita? Yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Finley? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. So this concludes and closes our public hearing. Thank you. It's going to be exciting projects. Yes. Much needed and very exciting for our district. Yes. So thank you, everyone, for thank all the you. hard work you put in up to this point. Um, and I'm anxious for the uh, as re rest of the board for our next steps and uh, moving forward. Absolutely. President Maletta, if we could just allow them one chance to start heading home. I know most of them are coming from pretty far and with the okay. weather, if you guys want to head out, we appreciate everything and safe travels on your way home. Yes, thank you for being here tonight. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Scott, you have to stay. You only live in Ogden. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't get to go. <laughs> All set. Okay, now we will resume our discussion meeting. Um, and we'll, our next item on the agenda is our good news report from Mrs. Devers Lowy. Good evening. Tonight we are celebrating the achievements of our Portage High School students. First, we would like to recognize Portage High School senior Holly Helt, who has been named the Class of 2021 Distinguished Young Woman. After the pandemic canceled plans for last spring's scheduled competition, a team of teachers selected Holly to represent Portage at the state competition later this month. Holly is currently preparing her materials for the virtual state competition. She recently presented Be Your Best Self to our first grade students at Aylesworth Elementary, where Holly explained how everyone can live their best life and be their best selves. This is a project that makes you smile. The dental vocational students at Portage High School made t-shirts and sock puppets for Operation Smile, an organization that provides surgery and speech therapy for children born with cleft lips and palates. The children will use their shirts as hospital gowns and the sock puppets will be used during speech therapy. Their kindness and generosity is outstanding. Next, Portage High School senior Jasmine Garrido has been awarded the 2021 Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship. The award covers tuition, related fees, and books at an Indiana college or university for four years. Just 143 scholarships are awarded in Indiana each year. Jasmine is a member of the Portage High School Marching Band, National Honor Society, Flute Choir, and Pep Band. She spent two years as a section leader in the band and is the secretary of NHS. Next year, Jasmine will attend the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University Bloomington, where she will study international business and marketing. 
Her goal is to become a representative of a large corporation or become the CEO of her own company. Portage High School junior Caleb O'Neill has been selected to perform in the 2021 Indiana All-State Honor Band. Caleb is a member of the Portage High School Wind Ensemble, Advanced Jazz Ensemble, and the Pride of Portage Marching Band. This is the second year in a row that Caleb has auditioned into the band. The 83-member honor band will release a video of their performance on March 28th on YouTube. Congratulations goes to the Portage High School eSports Team Red on qualifying for the Indiana High School eSports Network State Championship Finals on Rocket League. Team members Christian Maldonado, Carter Ostrander, Dakota Wagner and Tristan Wilkie competed against Carmel last week and took the runner-up spot. This is the first year for the Portage Esports League and we are incredibly proud of all that they have achieved this year. Finally, we have our Portage High School Quiz Bowl team who has qualified to participate in the Indiana Academic Quiz Bowl State Finals. The team will compete virtually in a three-game tournament on March 6th. We wish our Quiz Bowl students the best of luck at State. Congratulations to our Portage High School students on all that you have achieved this school year. We are so proud of you. Thank you. What a great report. It's exciting to see in the midst of the pandemic that so many great things are still going on in our, in our schools and kids are getting to participate in so many things. Uh, at this time, are there any adjustments to the agenda by the board? Not? Okay, we'll move on to our superintendent's consent agenda, <clears throat> which contains the personnel report from February 9th, 2021, the donation report for February 8th, 2021, and our facility use request report. We have a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Finley? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Miletta? Yes. Next, we have our board consent agenda, which has got the me meeting minutes from our special board meeting and public hearing for district projects from January 25th, 2021. Minutes of the special board meeting board of finance from January 25th, 2021. And the minutes of our regular board meeting of January 25th, 2021. Do we have a motion to approve the board's consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We call roll, please. Trustee Vasquez, yes. Trustee Maletta? Yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. And Trustee Finley? Yes. Uh, next, we move on to board development, uh, board reports. Do we have any board reports today? I do. Trustee Vasquez, please. Yes. Uh, the Education Foundation, uh, just a reminder that the grant cycle is open to all Portage Township School staff. The proposals will be accepted until March 31st. We have our monthly meeting tomorrow. The food pantry, there will not be any distribution of meals on Thursday, this Thursday, due to the extremely cold temperatures. The amount of food items that was distributed last week was uh, enough to last two weeks, maybe even longer. And the policy committee, Trustee Wilkie, our superintendent, and I will be meeting next Thursday, the 18th, to review and revise some policies. I would say there are about 20 or yeah. more. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you. Trustee Finley. And I do have just three updates. Um, lots of stuff happened legislatively. At the federal level, we do have Miguel Cardona, who's going through the Senate hearing confirmation process. At the state level, we're having a, a hoot of a time. Um, the session closes in April, which means there's a race to finalize a number of bills. Um, there's an action alert for House Bill 1005, which the Indiana School Board Association is asking citizens, educators, and school boards to respond to immediately. We're going to address this later on on tonight's agenda. State House Day is tomorrow for school board members. It is a virtual event, and I plan to attend and have an update at our next board meeting. Locally, the state of, um, I'm sorry, locally, the city of Portage Redevelopment Commission has budgeted $100,000 to support Portage Township schools again this year in the form of a technology education grant this calendar year. So I wanted to make, us, make you guys all aware of that. 
and that's all I have. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other reports? Okay. We have no old business, we'll move on to new business. The approval of the notice of determination of preliminary determination advertisement. Do we have a motion to approve? Oh, I'll make a motion to approve the notice of determination of preliminary determination advertisement. Second. We have the motion and a second. Any discussion? You call a roll, please. Trustee Vasquez, yes. Trustee Mileto? Yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Finley? Yes. Bless you. No, for worse than sneezing in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have item 9.02, our recommendation and approval of foods to schools agreement. Dr. Alanis, can you explain? Yes, um, our Portage Township Schools uh, Food Service Division is requesting to renew the food to school purchase cooperative agreement so that we can uh, take uh, part in the cooperative purchasing. This would be through July uh, excuse me, it would be July 2021 through June 30th, 2022. And it would be our second renewal of a possible four years. So we'll have two additional opportunities to renew. Um, I have attached the agreement for your information. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the food to school agreement? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. The motion a second any discussion i just want to say that this is great um if we don't have this cooperative opportunity for our um school district um we don't we have higher costs so thank you for the continued efforts on behalf of be sure to tell teresa the same sure. thank you so much yes thank you <clears throat> any other discussion if not call roll please trustee Mileto. yes trustee wilkie yes trustee finley yes trustee vasquez yes Next, we have our approval of the overnight field trip by the Portage High School wrestling team to Indianapolis on February 18th to, through the 21st, 2021. This, uh, of course, comes with congratulations to our Portage High School wrestlers who are sectional champ champions. Uh, they did a great job um, and represented Portage High School and Portage Township Schools very well um, at regionals this past weekend. And we are asking for them to be able to have approval to travel downstate for the championship rounds for individual state. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the overnight field trip? I make a motion to approve the overnight field trip. A second. A motion and two seconds. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> if not, call the roll, please. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Finley? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Mileta? Yes. And good luck to our wrestlers. Absolutely. Next, we have our recommendation and approval of resolution R5-2021, House Bill 01005. I'll read the resolution. Whereas the voucher expansion bills in Indiana are part of a long-term coordinated effort to diminish public schools, and Indiana's cumulative state spending for private school vouchers has now topped $1 billion. Whereas Indiana's spending of tax dollars on vouchers has increased exponentially, in 2011 to 2012, the state spent $15.5 million on vouchers. In 2019 to 2020, it was $172.8 million. That's 11 times more than the initial expense. Whereas Indiana currently ranks 45th in the nation for total K-12 through education spending as a percentage of gross state product, and whereas Indiana's voucher system already deprives every public school system in Indiana of $172 per student, that means a school system of 6,000 students is losing more than $1 million a year. Whereas, according to legislators, the voucher program was created to help poor and minority children trapped in low-performing schools. The most recent statistics show that 57% of students receiving vouchers for the 20 19 to 2020 school year were white and 26% of voucher families have annual incomes of more than $75,000. Whereas Indiana has one of the nation's largest voucher programs, it does not need to expand again. And whereas the taxpayers of Indiana are currently paying all or part of private school tuition for families earning up to $95,000 a year. In Indiana's current voucher system, if a family qualifies for vouchers and their income increases, 
they remain eligible even if they make about double Indiana's medium household income. This means that wealthy families with students already in private school would have their tuition bill paid for by all taxpayers, including low-income taxpayers. This comes from School Matters, March 5, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Trustees of Portage Township Schools, one, continue to support Indiana public schools to the maximum degree as they have gone above and beyond to deal with the demands of the pandemic and as they face the challenges of making up for lost learning and providing additional services to our students. Oppose the expansion of vouchers because this system is funding thousands of families that could afford private schools without the help from taxpayers. These vouchers divert state dollars from the poorest and the neediest of public school students in order to give to the wealthiest. Encourage every public school family and every business conscious member of the public to protest the voucher expansion and discourage legislators from diverting scarce, scarce public education dollars. Passed and adopted by the School Board of Trustees this 8th day of February 2021. Do we have a motion to approve resolution 5-2021? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll please. Trustee Finley? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Mileta? Yes. And Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Will we be sending that resolution to our state legislators? Yes. Thank you. Okay, next we have our superintendent reports, Dr. Alanez. Uh, I did wanna share with you um, in particular an example. This is one of our weekend packs. These come prepackaged. They're fully reimbursable meals. They're shelf stable. Uh, moving forward, these will be going home on the weekends. Every child, two uh, meals for breakfast and two meals for lunch. Um, again, these are fully reimbursable and we're taking advantage of the fact that number one, uh, it does not take our personnel away from being able to pack the regular meals for the week for virtual students or if we were to have to go on a short term virtual for all in person as well. It also doesn't take them away in the event that we have quarantines and things that we can't get to packing these meals. Um, they again are shelf stable. So one great thing about this is also if a family is not in need for that particular time being, they can stock this away or use it how, however they see fit. It does meet all the nutritional guidelines as expected and outlined in um, the legislation, but I just wanted to share those with you. A Couple of other items. Oh, these are also the, our regular meals, as you know, throughout the week are available for all children through 18 years of age, we continue to promote that, and that is also through the waiver. Uh, no child in the school district or across the state <clears throat> is being charged for meals, breakfast or lunch. Yes. So how are those distributed? On Fridays, they will go home with the children. Okay, and then the yeah. students uh, that have younger siblings? Um, that is a situation where they'll work with the school personnel, um, the school advisors, the counselors to determine if if there's additional bags that will be going home. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, just a reminder, we have no school this Friday or next Monday. Um, heard some students talking um, and some adults as well about some much needed uh, couple four day weeks that everyone can use to relax and recharge. We're in the process of finalizing um, our winter assessment window. Mrs. Williams does a good job setting all of that up so that the team can quickly analyze the data and be responsive to the instructional needs of our students. And I will be sharing that data with you once we have a chance to have all of our students tested and um, all of the data analyzed. I want to thank uh, Dr. Stevens and Mrs. Williams and the entire team um, at the building levels. I do believe you probably saw some of the pictures on our Facebook page. Our students came who are virtual and took the NWEA assessment. Um, it was a great turnout. Our families really enjoyed coming. I loved watching the comments online of parents stating how ecstatic the staff was to receive the kids for the day. So it was a great opportunity. And again, a great opportunity for us to assess their learning and make sure that we're um, still meeting their educational needs as well. I continue to just want to thank all of our families, both virtual and in person, for all of their flexibility and hard work. 
Um, I do assure you that we are continuing to take the time and attention necessary for our virtual students just as we are the in-person students. We are being very uh, conscientious of making sure those students needs are equally being met. We've received a lot of positive feedback still for our parent square and our website. Um, it has been well received. Parents feel like there's great communication. And again, as you've stated, the website, very user friendly. So I wanna thank everyone. And this evening, Mr. Ramian is here who had a huge hand in um, getting that information onto the website and monitoring it for proper compliance ongoing. So um, I did pass along to, to Nate and Mrs. devers Lowy when the board had sent their appreciation, but being that Nate's here, I think it's a good thing to, to let him know again. Um, I'm excited that we have facility use back up and running. Our community is excited for that as well. Uh, the, the health department has been very responsive to getting those plans back in a timely manner and giving the approval for those. So I think overall it's been a great um, opportunity to get our community back into our buildings. Also, it's exciting we have spectators now back into our events at 25%. So the kids, of course, are ecstatic for that, and um, families are as well. So we are moving in the right direction, um, receiving fewer and fewer emails of situations of quarantines, um, but of course we're continuing to uh, be very intentional about our efforts with social distancing and our cleaning protocols and making sure that everyone is masked and staying safe. Thank you. Are there any items not on the agenda the board would like to discuss? Dr. Finley. Yes, um, I do want to follow up and piggyback on Dr. Allen Naz's comments regarding the website and thank you for your leadership with that because that has to trickle down to the rest of the team. So um, I love that it's in different, multiple languages, not just different, but multiple languages. Mm -hmm. People can self-select and self-identify where yes. they fit. So thank you for that. Um, I do want to say out loud um, something that we can take leadership on as a community as, and as a school board as well. A hot topic right now um, throughout the whole entire state is why educators are not in the state's plan to vaccinate our educators. The federal government has labeled our educators as essential workers, but yet the state of Indiana has not included them in that vaccination plan. There is a letter circulating from the Indiana State Teachers Association asking state leaders to work with educators on fighting COVID. Um, I'm asking for support to sign this letter, which is circulating, contact our local legislators to share with them our desires to support our educators. And we should probably discuss if there is more that we can do as a board. Um, our education we know is essential. We need to do something to communicate our support for our educators on this topic as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Great point. Where do we find this letter to sign? Um, it's it's stood through the Indiana State Teachers Association. And it's easy to find, so okay. um, hopefully we can find that and yeah. send it out. I will that. absolutely send that out. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items anyone would like to discuss? I would just like to say that I did miss uh, Mrs. Uh, Devers Lowy's uh, presentations that we were getting on a regular basis and. Um, I like the fact that she highlighted not only, you know, she, she covered, up, covered it all. You talked about the distinguished young woman, the scholarship from the Lilly Endowment, uh, music, athletics, and uh, just uh, the competition, the academic competition. And I know it takes time and effort for her to put that together, but it just really warms my heart mm -hmm. to see the accomplishments that our students are achieving, mm -hmm. especially during this time. So thank you, if you would please uh, relay that message to, to Melissa, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, did we receive any public comment forms today? I don't believe so. No, we did not. Okay, so our next meeting will be February 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, we will be back here again. So if no one has anything else, this meeting's adjourned.